Yes, I think it's time for another trophy video. And so over an 11 year period up to today and the 116 platinum trophies I've earned, which ones am I most proud of? So yes, that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video. Just a very candid conversation with me and not you the viewer, but me in this video camera as I sit here alone privately talking in my bedroom. But you guys know I've done tons of trophy videos over the years discussing the hardest ones I've ever earned or the rarest ones, general anecdotes and stories about things I've done in games. We recently discussed platinum trophies that I've walked away from and didn't earn and kind of gave up on. And so I will assure you there's not gonna be any overlap here and you're gonna get something new over those 116 games we've been discussing. And, uh, you know, I know the proudest Platinums may sound like the hardest, but that's not necessarily true, as we're going to be talking about in a second here, because these games may have a different place in my heart where it's like, yeah, they were certainly challenging, or maybe they were extremely challenging, but uh, just for their place and time and why I carry them with so much pride is what we're really going to be discussing here. And so let's bring in that trophy list. Got my phone right here, got the list loaded up, and we're going to be talking about the very first one, which is right down at the bottom of the list, where trophies first came out in 2008. The first two games well initially the first game nothing else was Super Stardust HD now that's a PSN game no platinum but the first game ever with a platinum was Uncharted Drake's Fortune and this was a, a situation where the game got patched I believe August 4th it was exactly now let's take a look at the date I earned this platinum <laughs> August 6th so it took two days and the reason why this is I guess so significant is because you know I wasn't really a, the kind of person in games to go crazy when it came to playing the hardest setting you know I never really went out of my way to do something like that and you know I dabble with achievements on Xbox 360 a little bit but I never really fell into it as hard and I think that's because Xbox was never really my primary platform I played mostly exclusives over there and I waited until PlayStation 3 came out to where I mostly played on that as the next-gen platform back in that console generation. And it was one of those things where once trophies came along and it was already my primary platform, I just thought, oh man, I'm so excited about this new feature, so let's go hard on it, right? And so doing Uncharted was crazy for me because the hardest setting, crushing difficulty, needs to be completed for the Platinum. And the other thing is that when this patch came in, you couldn't use an existing save file. That was the caveat to the game getting patches that, well, you know, all brand new fresh save files will be able to earn Platinum trophies. So everyone was kind of upset about that back in the day. I remember that specifically. But it's fair, and so I immediately started a new save file, went through crushing, and it sucked, but I did it in such a timely manner, and, you know, I just loved that game, right? So I had no problem going through it again, and, yeah, there was a lot of really shitty moments in that game, and the damn thing is, once it came to PlayStation 4 Remastered, it got even more difficult with the brutal setting, and I did that as well. I don't know how, because it kind of drove me crazy, but Uncharted Drake's Fortune, definitely a game that I think uh, is very special. Moving on, we come to, yeah, Bioshock for sure is in there for me. I, I love this game. A lot of people do, right? I think Bioshock speaks for itself, but the trophy and achievement list is no easy task, certainly, because the hardest trophy is completing the survival difficulty, but you don't have, you can't use a Vita Chamber right here. I chose the impossible. And the Vita Chamber being more or less a save point everywhere throughout Rapture, right? It's kind of the way the game explains when you die, you kind of come back to life and you have a lot of the same shit. But most of the uh, enemies may have died or not regained all their health back, but you know, it's, it's a checkpoint. So basically you'd have to go through the setting manually saving. So if you, you know, get up to a certain point, you haven't saved in a while, you die, you gotta go right back to that last save file, which is not hard. If you're diligent about saving, it's fine. It's not necessarily like Dead Space where you only have to do three save files throughout the entire playthrough and we'll be talking about that in a second because that's going to be in here for me but five shock is a game where i love it so much and as that's not that bad but as difficult as it can be at times in survivor i would absolutely do it again and again and again like i have no problem going through all these trophies uh it's just so fun now we've discussed MotorStorm Pacific Rift a few times, but it's definitely a proud platinum for me because this is the kind of game where I think for most people, if they platinum this game, they had to really like it. You can't, you couldn't be a trophy hunter for this game and you weren't super hardcore into the franchise. You know what I mean? Like if you, you know, go for a lot of trophies, usually, you know, some games might be so demanding to the point where it's like, you know, I like this game, but I don't like it that much. And then it becomes so much of a grind and it becomes very tedious and a lot of the, the flavor and the fun of that game gets, you know, thrown out the door immediately if it's not a franchise that you're really into. But for me, I'm really into MotorStorm, so 
this was a really easy game for me to do. Now it has difficult trophies. It has an online where, you know, you have to reach the last rank, but if you do bad, you could actually lose experience, which is something you don't really see that often in multiplayer games, but it had something like that. Now that wasn't a problem for me because I was good at the game. And so it was easy to progress through that. The, the infamous win three online you know races in a row is, is tough and it's very opportunistic that's why multiplayer trophies suck but eventually i got that one as well and so as long as this game takes with the time trials the the main story mode where you know the ai is ruthless as shit and slams you off the road and rubber bands like crazy it was still a game that i had no issue doing and whereas i know your typical trophy hunter may get really annoyed and pissed off at this game but i loved it so now we do come to Dead Space, and so I think Dead Space is also a game where it, it hits on a lot of fronts of being a fantastic trophy list, which is that it makes you do things you wouldn't normally do, like play the game with one you know particular gun, which was the starting gun, right? That little like cutter weapon or whatever, right? It, you know, Dead Space is very creative with all the weapons that they have in the game to take care of the enemies, but I love a trophy like that, where it makes you play the game you wouldn't normally do so before. Then there is going through it on the hardest setting, and then there is doing something where it's like, hey, go through it, and you can only save three times, and so if you do die at any point, you only go back to one, you know, you go back to your last save, but you only get to do that three times, so you actually have to use it quite sparingly. If you use it a fourth time, you've ruined the trophy and you won't be able to, un uh, to, to unlock it, right? So you have to pick where that third one's really going to go, and so the midway point in the game is kind of like the toughest part, where it's like you don't really know where you should be using it, uh, especially because there are certain areas in that game where it could really get you. And what's also more particular for me with this game is that well i think dead space now has got a lot more respect lately for being a fr well the first game in particular a game that's gotten a lot more respect in recent years for being a fantastic horror game and i can see that for somebody like me if you don't know i'm a total bitch like i can't really do scary games man i just can't i'm i'm jumpy i hate jump scares i hate the atmospheric music i i, I just can't do it and so I'm not going to lie. I don't know how I did this game. I genuinely don't. There were so many like rooms I didn't want, want to walk into. There were, you know, even on the second playthrough and I knew certain things were coming up. I just didn't want to do it again. Um, and I had to like desensitize myself from the game as shitty as that sounds, but it's so atmospheric and it's so good at what it does. I had to like keep the volume down or, or keep um, the TV on or something where you know, another TV on, like, in the background where it's playing an episode of Friends or some shit. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I had to be somewhat taken out of the world to do it easier. Like, I'd listen to a podcast, but at least I got it done. Little Big Planet is also one of them for a few reasons. So, when this game came out, I think a lot of people, they really liked it, right? For its time, this was a really great PlayStation 3 game. It was very creative, very different. You had all walks of gamer life playing this game. If you were a hardcore Call of Duty player, you were playing this. If you were, you know, into puzzle games, you were playing this game. If you were into racing games, you were playing Little Big Planet. But a lot of people didn't create in the game. So not only did the single player, you know, had its moments with uh, the trophies that require you to go through every single level without dying. Like that can be, you know, annoying for certain levels, especially that one of the last ones where there's just a whole lot going on. So not being able to die once going through that's, you know, a pain. But anybody can really do it. It's more of a trial and error thing, really. Uh, to where you might be prone to falling or something like that, you know, just by sheer, like sheer mistake. But the thing about Little Big Planet's trophies is that pretty much 99% of the people that have a platinum in this game, they had to boost it because there's creator trophies where you have to be liked by the community, you have to get hard by the community. And um, I was able to do this legit because I loved building in the game and I actually built good stuff to where I organically earned these trophies. And so I think that's why I really um, am proud of this Platinum as well, because I didn't have to do something like that. And, you know, I've definitely been there for my fair share of games where I needed a boosting partner or something where I just flat out said, you know what, I know this is super skilled based, but there's an exploit to boost it. I'm taking that route. Uh, because sometimes you just, you can't do it. Some of these multiplayer trophies are so ridiculous. And so that's why I really wear this one well, because like, dude, I... I loved building in the game and I was able to knock this one out no problem. Katamari Forever, I'm including this is, oh, you just hit Siri. Why would you do that, Melissa? Ah, Melissa, why would you do that? All right, goodbye. Thanks for ruining my video. Katamari Forever, the thing is, 
this is the only the one and only game I wrote a trophy guide for on the internet and for as long as I've done YouTube and for all the people that know I you know hunt trophies and I like earning trophies and all that shit people go oh Ryan you should do trophy guides I don't know why people think they should arbitrarily just say you should do trophy guides because I have a lot of trophies ah uh, I use guides but this is the one game I wrote a guide for and I'll tell you this is why I don't write guides because I don't know it's just too much work you know what I mean I have I salute the people that put in the effort to you know do all these you know guides and, and game facts and things like that like you guys are the real MVP I couldn't do stuff like that especially because I'm just not that good at games if you tell me how to do it I can probably do it if you show me where it is I can go get it but I've never organically collected all the collectibles in the game like this is just that doesn't happen unless they're just super out in the open and not difficult to get whatsoever but like we always find ourselves in a place where we have to look something up and that's what was hard about Katamari Forever is that I was the only resource for this game I knew the most about it my guide is still the number one guide on the internet for it I believe and there's still typos in my guide because I'm an idiot and I, I didn't have autocorrect because I was typing it on like you know an old ass OS that didn't have autocorrect so if you're using my guide I apologize Final Fantasy X HD Remaster, yeah, it's a prop platinum. You wanna know why? Because it takes like well over 120, 30, 40, 50 hours. I don't know how much time I put in the game. I would imagine it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 hours, especially because I take my time with games. But it's a prop platinum because I love this game. If you go back to a two-year-old YouTube video uploaded by me, I'm probably wearing the um, uh, Titus's pendant as a necklace and I still have that but I just I don't know I kind of stopped wearing necklaces nowadays but man I love Final Fantasy X it's just the bee's knees uh, this game like gets me emotional I love the writing I love the story arc I love its quirky cringy moments I love turn-based combat um, you know I, I think the characters are great uh, it's just one of those things where I would do this game again in a heartbeat and you know damn well we're gonna include 10 2 as well because you know why not only did I love this one I liked it more a little bit more than 10 I'm one of those people and I have no shame because this is a fantastic game now if you want some insight on the trophies this one is a pain because the game works on absolute very small minor percentages based on very like thing like very missable things so this is a game where you have to follow an extremely detailed guide to the point where it almost feels like somebody's micromanaging you but you really have to micromanage yourself you know you, there's things where it's like if you don't talk to this person in this one specific moment you've lost 0.1% of the game and then you've missed out on the 100% and therefore you can't get a platinum so that's how ridiculous 10 2 can be but I would do it again. For the final Platinum I want to talk about you all, it's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, because, well, it's a fantastic game, but I also specifically saved this game as my 100th Platinum. And also, I left this trophy for the last one to unlock, which is Beat the Cock Marathon. So this was kind of like a symbolic thing of like, because of this trophy, you have to beat a marathon in the game. So that's swimming, running, cycling. And so it was just a goofy thing where it was like, oh, this is a sprint, a marathon, one platinum to 100 platinums. And also it's called Beat the Cock, which is hilarious. So that's why this game is also in there for me where it's like, oh yeah, I would do that again. And I guess that's the overarching theme of the entire video is that I'm proud of these Platinums because of just the fact that they were so fun. Uh, these are games that I, I love dearly and I really would do all of them again. And for some of these games I did do again because they got re-released on PlayStation 4. But that's what makes uh, something like this so important is that these games were so great. Uh, they offered a certain level of challenge uh, and satisfaction to how you could complete them. And I think that's what's really great about them. And so now I ask you, the viewer, yes, I am talking to you this time because the camera can't play video games. So what are your proudest Platinums? I think I've demonstrated that it's not necessarily a difficult game, but rather a game that you reflect on, that you had fun memories of. Maybe it was a good trophy list or, you know, it was online, so you had good memories with friends. I want to hear your stories because I'm sharing mine. And if you haven't yet, of course, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Grind to get pictures of my cat. And that's pretty much it. So I will see you all in my next video and you take it easy.